and good morning all welcome to the first session in our deep dive webinar series into web http html protocol with us today running the technical part of this webinar is the class sahar r d team leader and myself lior from the cost team as always, with all our webinars, we encourage you to ask questions as much as possible and as many as possible during the session through the WebEx chat interface. Please remember to forward your questions to everyone, not to PLV cost in private, as we will not be able to see it. So please, to everyone in the WebEx chat interface, our ND representatives are standing by and are waiting to answer your questions online. But again, as with always, rest assured, if your questions are not answered, we are collecting all and we'll answer them later on in an organized Q&A document that will be shared along with the slide deck, recording and everything. So without further ado, Dikla, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Lior. Um, I would like to start by saying that this session is targeted for performance engineering, junior to, through uh, senior. To make sure everyone is aligned, we will briefly go over Load Runner Flow, review web HTTP protocols, and then deep dive into Vuegen recording methods, followed by some demos. Finally, we will go over best practices and troubleshooting. Okay, an important comment before we begin. Throughout this session, I will be using Glowed Runner for my demos and examples, but all this is also relevant for both uh, Performance Center and Storm Runner Load. As you know, Load Runner is combined of three applications, Vuegen, Controller, and Analysis. Vuegen, captures end user business process and creates an automated performance testing script. You can consider Vuegen as the tool responsible for load runner scripting part. Controller is responsible for high scale replay of the script that you generated using Vuegen. Controller organizes, drives, manages, and monitors your load test. Remember that controller is equivalent to performance center host and to Storm Runner. Once the load test is completed, we are ready to move to the analysis phase. Analysis helps you to view and compare the results and the measurements of the load test. This session will focus on the initial phase of scripting, which is recording, and specifically on web HTTP HTML protocol recording. To create a script that simulates end user business flow, you have two options. The first is to write the script manually using Load Runner API. The second, if you want to go to the fast and easy way, is to use Vuegen Recorder, which will generate the script automatically for you. Vuegen Recorder listens and captures network traffic between the client and the application under test. Specifically for web script, the recorder captures HTTP traffic events. Once the recording is stopped, Vuegen will take care of generating the script for you. To understand the recording methods, we first need to go over some basic web terminology. In this session, we will focus only on network traffic level recording between the client and the server. Client-side events, for example, DOM events, are not part of this session. We will be looking only on web HTTP traffic. Therefore, it is important that we'll have at least a basic understanding of web protocols. So let's have a quick overview of web HTTP, HTTP HTTPS, and HTTP2 protocols. Some history. So here you can see the HTTP evolution. What's interesting is that HTTP 1.1 was officially introduced in 1999, and even today is considered as the internet standard. 
This is almost two decades of rule and counting. The latest improvement of HTTP is HTTP2, which was released just two years ago. And as you probably know, is already supported by LoadRunner. Over this period, we released three load testing products. The first was LoadRunner, then Performance Center, and the latest is StormRunner Load, which is our SaaS offering. Since we are talking about recording of web network traffic events, it is important to understand the basics of web HTTP. This can help you with configuration, optimization, and more importantly, with troubleshooting. To understand the differences, let's compare HTTP, HTTPS, and HTTP2 network layers. First, we have HTTP, which is a basic protocol to exchange or transfer hypertext over TCP connection using the default port 80. There is one TCP connection per request and up to six concurrent open connections in the browser. Second is HTTPS, which is the secure version of HTTP. This means that all the communication between your browser and the website um, is encrypted. You can easily spot it in the URL, which contains the letter S and uses the default port 443. HTTPS originally used SSL to provide privacy. Nowadays, TLS is used, which is a predecessor of SSL version 3. Third is HTTP2, which is the first new version of HTTP since 1999. It is secured by default, so the URL is similar to HTTPS. And again, TLS layer is used to make sure that the traffic is encrypted. One major improvement is that it is fully multiplexed and can send multiple requests. It is no longer blocked on the arrival of responses. So HTTP2 opens only one TCP connection, which makes it a very, very efficient protocol. We are now ready to drill down into Fusion Recorder and go over the recording methods. LoadRunner is capable of recording HTTP or HTTPS traffic from all applications. LoadRunner supports different recording methods, as you can see in the recording mode dropdown. First, we have hooking on any application, including web browser. Second is recording via proxy server. And the third option is to supply a capture file from third party sniffer. Currently, LoadRunner supports pickup, SAS, or a browser generated HAR file. Let's go over them one by one. Let's start with hooking, which is a default recording method. As I just mentioned, LoadRunner can record both browser and non-browser applications using the hooking mechanism. How is it done? Well, LoadRunner recording engine attaches its DLLs to the application, whether it is a browser or an exe file. Once the hooking phase is done, LoadRunner will be part of the application process. LoadRunner is aware of all traffic between the client and the server because it's part of the client process. This is very powerful. And this is why hooking is so efficient and why it is a default recording method. All the network traffic messages during the recorder, recording are captured and stored in the event database. So by the end of the recording phase, the database contains all network events, which are later used to generate the script. The main advantage of hooking approach is that LoadRunner is aware of all messages. LoadRunner can filter the messages and even handle authentication or encryption without any user intervention. On the other hand, it is considered to be an intrusive, intrusive approach and some applications may even block LoadRunner recorder in the hooking phase. Another thing to consider is that hooking is supported only on Windows machines. 
let's see hooking in action okay let's start with recording using a web browser any of major browsers are supported ie firefox chrome edge just enter the url you want to record and we are good to go Okay, now Load Runner hooking phase is happening behind the scenes. Once the hooking phase is completed, IE will be open. In Vuegen output window, in the background, you can see the recorded events are starting to arrive. This is a convenient way to see the content of the recording log file. In addition, you can see that the increasing number in the recording toolbar. Let's take a look in Process Explorer at IE Process Instance. Here you can clearly see the hooking mechanism that we just talked about. So DLLs from Load Runner installation folder become part of IE process. You see that each click triggers a web request. Then the number increases. This means that events are captured. If we open a new tab, a new IE process will be spun from the parent browser, which is in hooked process. That means that Load Runner can record the business flow generated from the second tab as well. You can see it here in Process Explorer. Okay, now let's close the hooked browser. Recording is still on, so if end events are sent from the browser, the recorder, recorder will capture them. What do you think will happen if I open a new instance of IE not from Vuegen Recorder? Well, the answer is nothing. This instance is not hooked, so no traffic is captured. You can see the number of the recording events is static. And this time, there are no load runner DLLs loaded. Let's stop the recording and just wait for Vuegen to generate the script for us based on the capture events. Before we move to the next demo, I want to say that everything that happened during the recording can be viewed in the recording log. We will explore this log later as part of the troubleshooting section. Also, um, in data folder, you can find the different snapshots that were taken during the recording. So we, are, we have seen browser recording. Let's see how we can record a Windows application. Recording of Windows application is similar to hooking, but has its subtle differences. Okay. This time, we choose Windows application from the drop-down list. Just set the correct path to the application executable and set the arguments if needed. Let's record CMD and wait for it to be hooked. Let's wait. Okay. Now you see that CMD process is spanned under the Vuegen process. CMD is hooked with Load Runner DLLs, which means that Load Runner can now capture network traffic initiated from the command line. Let's open Notepad. Since Notepad, Notepad is a child process of command line, it too is hooked by Load Runner. Note that um, the number of recording events is not increasing since there is no currently any web traffic to record. What will happen if I open another instance of command line? Well, since it is an independent process not initiated by Vuegen, it will not be hooked, same as, ha same as happened in browser. So it will not be recorded. Okay, 
Now we can close the hooked application and stop the recording. Viewgen will now generate the script from the captured events. Another recording method is the ability to record the webflow using a proxy server. When hooking is not possible, for example, due to antivirus or security restrictions, Fusion provides the proxy recording option. This is a classy proxy methodology. Fusion serves as the proxy server and captures all communication between the application and the AUT. In proxy recording mode, we change the application's internet connection setting to point to an HTTP proxy configured by LoadRunner. Important note is that your client application must support proxy configuration. LoadRunner supports two proxy recording options. First is remote proxy recording, which means that Vuegen and application, let's say a browser, are on different machines. Remote proxy recording is useful if, for example, you want to record a mobile device. The second is local proxy recording, which is exactly the opposite. Vuegen and the browser are on the same machine. A common use case for this is when the application blocks the default hooking recording. The main advantage of the proxy method is its simplicity and flexibility of recording remotely and recording non-Windows application. All the cons listed here are initiated from the same root cause. Using proxy recording, LoadRunner has less control over the data. It is not part of the application process as it is when uh, using the hooking method, but rather it is an external server in the network. Oh, and one more thing. LoadRunner proxy recording is available only for web-based protocols. So it is not available for Citrix, RDP, and so on. Lucky for us, we are focusing on web. OK, let's look at the two variants of proxy recording. First, let's look at remote proxy recording, which goes like this. OK, we choose remote application via a load runner proxy from the drop-down list. And we configure the proxy IP and port using the same details that the browser is configured with. So let's open the browser on the remote machine and look at the LAN settings. Let's double check that the proxy server and IP are using the same details as we configured in Fusion Recorder. Very good. So now we can start the recording. Un unlike hooking, this time LoadRunner does not invoke the browser, but rather records what the current browser picks up. This is because of the proxy configuration we just performed. OK. You can see from the recording log that the recorder is capturing events and that there is traffic. So let's initiate some business process in our demo application. Let's buy a tablet. You can see how the events are captured in the remote recorder and in the recording log. You can see all HTTP requests and network traffic. Now let's stop the recording and wait for Viewgen to generate the script for us based on the recorded events. OK. We saw remote proxy recording. Now let's look at recording with local proxy. For this, we select a web browser and then open the recording options window. Make sure 
Use the load runner proxy to record a local application is selected. Now move back to LAN settings and verify that the proxy is properly configured. That's it. We are ready to record using local proxy. Okay, again, in the output window, you see the recorded events. You can clearly see that filling the forms and performing client events do not affect the recorder. If a web request is not triggered, nothing will happen. The number stays static. Okay, in this highlighted line, you can see that LoadRunner is using itself as a proxy for this recording, meaning that this is a local proxy recording method. All the rest is as usual. When recording is stopped, the script will be generated. Okay, um, the last recording method is capture files. This is a simple method that can be generated from any device. Capture files are good workaround in case other recording methods are not supported. Well, LoadRunner supports three capture file types, SAS, this is a format used by Fiddler. The file contains decrypted data in a plain format. Very easy to use. Pickup, which is a format used by Wireshark. The main issue with this format is to handle HTTPS traffic. In order to decrypt messages, the user has to obtain a private server key. In most cases, this is very problematic. Might even be a deal breaker. The third format is HAR, or HTTP Archive, which is used by modern browsers, Google Chrome, Firefox, Edge. It contains decrypted information, similar to SAS, in a JSON format. Again, very intuitive and simple format. A big advantage of capture files is that they can be generated on any device, anywhere, anytime. This is considered um, offline recording since the capture file was generated in the past and can be used in Load Runner anytime. Each file format has its advantages. For Pickup and Fiddler, for example, you can filter by IP and generate different scripts per device. The main disadvantage of this method is that Load Runner depends on the data in those files to generate the script and some data might be missing. Now, let's demo how you use a HAR file to generate your script. Let's open Chrome and activate the developer tools. Start recording using the browser. You can see that the browser is captures all network events while the page is loaded. Let's do some business process in the browser and then stop the browser recording. Now just generate your HAR file and save it. Let's open Vuegen Choose Captured Traffic File Analysis. Select the HAR file we just created and press Start Recording. Okay, Vuegen will now analyze the HAR file and generate the script. It might, might take a while, so let's wait. A bit more. And that's it. Your web script is now ready. In the recording report, you can see that LoadRunner identified the hosts that were captured in the HAR file. Super easy, 
super fast with minimal effort, if any. So just for uh, the fun, let's replay the generated script and verify that it runs successfully. On a side note, this was a simple business flow. Usually, you will need to do some tweaking like correlations before reaching a successful replay. Okay, so now that you are familiar with all the recording methods, let's look at some tips and tricks. Okay, so the main question that you must be asking yourself is which recording method should I use? Well, the rule of thumb is try, to, try the default hooking method. If this doesn't work or is not supported, for example, if you need to record on Linux machine, Use a proxy recording method. If proxy recording is not working either, use capture, capture file method. If none of the above suits, just open a ticket with uh, our support. Okay, the floating recording toolbar enables you to control the recording of Vuegen scripts and provide easy access to common script, script commands. You will see it once the recording begins. You can see the time that has elapsed since recording began, excluding time when the recording was paused. You can also see how many events have been recorded. If the number does not increase, it implies a recording issue. We recommend creating different actions to manage different flows. This way, the flows will be easier to manage and they can be reused for other scripts. Also, add comments. The more, the merrier. The script can easily become a large and complex. Adding comments during the recording can help to navigate easier in the script and understand the steps. The last tip, is that you should close the browser before stopping the recording. There are two main reasons for this. First, when you close the browser and events are triggered, we need the recorder to be alive so that it will be able to catch them. Secondly, in the case of hooking, the browser is, a, is an hooked application with load runner DLS. If you keep the browser open, the browser won't be clean. Okay, port mapping. Uh, this is an advanced configuration of recording. It is relevant for the hooking mode and for the socket level capture mode. It is not relevant for WinINet. So when should you use this advanced uh, option? The most common use for port mapping is when the default load runner SSL configuration does not work. You will need to configure the encryption level of the client side so that it can connect successfully with the server. You can configure the SSL level and set specific cipher. Just choose it from the list or add a new one. If the SSL is not configured cor correctly, the server will not allow the communication to be established and the SSL handshake will fail. This means that the recording will fail too. A good place to start troubleshooting is the recording log. You can find the file in the script folder under the data directory. The log contains all network traffic events that occurred during the recording session. Therefore, it can really help to spot errors or network problems. Each event is represented as a separate line in the recording log. Those, by the way, are the numbers you see while recording. Those are the increasing numbers. Let's go over some examples. In the first few lines of the log, you will see which application was recorded and the entire hooking chain in this example, you can see that a 32-bit IE was recorded. 
The strange number in the brackets have meaning. A34 is um, IE process ID, and C55 is the thread ID. Other important information that we can see from the log is DNS lookup. Here we see the matched IP for my server, and that the communication passed through proxy server, probably an internal company proxy. If you are wondering what is SID, the answer is it represents the session ID or the connection number. This can help us to track the open connections. We can see all HTTP requests. Here, as part of the GET request, 450 bytes were received. And the protocol used here was HTTP. You can see it by uh, service name, equal HTTP. The service name represents the protocol LoadRunner identify. So you can see any of LoadRunner pro supported protocols, for example, SMTP, RDP, HTTP2, etc. The recording log can tell us everything, including the security level and the cipher used. Here we can see LoadRunner used TLS 1.1 to talk with the server and TLS 1.2 to talk to the client. Here are some common examples of issues that can be spotted in the log. My tip for you is that most of the errors can be fixed just by configuration in port mapping. First example here is connection termination. It is initiated by the client. This can be triggered if, for example, the browser closed the connection or if there was navigation to other page or just because the user decided to close a browser tab. Second example is failed connection. Load runner recording engine was unable to connect to this remote server. Load runner tried several times with no luck and cannot capture traffic between client to this remote server. This can happen due to many reasons. Look in the log and see if you can spot earlier errors that might cause this. Another thing we can see from this log is that server's service equal nothing. That means that load runner doesn't know which protocol was used for this communication. Bottom line, the automatic, the automatic connect failed. You need to manually go to port mapping and configure this server. Third example is SSL handshake failure. It means that load runner tried to connect with server using TLS 1.1, 1.1, sorry, while the server supports different SSL level, or maybe the cipher is not correct. Again, go to port mapping and manual configure the security level for this server. As you probably know, HTTP2 is supported since LoadRunner version 12.53. That's about a year and a half ago. If your AUT was upgraded and now supports HTTP2, it has no effect on your current LoadRunner scripts. LoadRunner supports full backward compatibility, so scripts that were recorded in HTTP 1.1 will also replay successfully on HTTP 2. So the only impact is if you want to record a new flow over HTTP 2. But don't worry, there is a minor impact. Remember port mapping? HTTP 2 is a great example of a common use case of this. The only thing you need to do to record HTTP 2 is to enable TLS ALPN before you start the recording. With this configuration set, the server understands that the client supports HTTP 2 and will use this protocol for communication. Enabling the SSL recording option must be done before recording, otherwise 
the initial SSL handshake will, with the server will fail. Last tip for today's session, um, I want to introduce you to a magical recording option. Use protected application recording. Why magical? Because if hooking recording is blocked, just check this checkbox and magic will happen. For example, we know that Office, a Microsoft Office application block load runner hooking. But let's say you want to create a Vuegen script for an Excel macro that fetches some data from the internet. Without this option enabled, hooking will just fail. Okay, um, that's it for today's session. Thank you very much for listening. Lior, back to you. Thank you, Dikla, for this enlightening and enriching session, which I'm sure was new for some of us and not for all of us, but it was educating nonetheless. Um, our next session is set for six to eight weeks from now and we'll cover replay. Uh, but we are curious to hear from you. If there are any specific topics you would like us to cover, feel free to email us at plv underscore cost at microfocus.com with any and all suggestions you may have for our future sessions. We'll be happy to hear from you. And <clears throat> I bid you a farewell for the rest of the day. We will stay on the chat for another 10 minutes to try and answer questions. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed and I wish you again a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye.